All right, everybody, welcome back again. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the initial process and the quick handshake that we can see in the quick protocol. So stick around. So in the previous videos, we went over an introduction to Quick. Then we talked about how to decrypt it. So now we're just going to take a quick haha, look at the initial process that Quick goes through in order to establish a connection. So you can download the trace file down in the description down below, as well as the decryption key. And you can put those in Wireshark and follow right along. So here I am in Kali Linux. I went ahead and opened up Wireshark and I've got my Quick protocol. So a conversation here, and I've also decrypted it. Now at a high level, we're just going to take a breeze through here. So we're just going to see what kind of things jump out about the Quick protocol. So first of all, we've already talked in the past how Quick is built over UDP, and we saw why that was. Uh, now it can be integrated into almost any kernel in the entire world, right? They all support UDP, so Quick can use that to gain entry into a device and into the kernel. So first, some interesting things that you're going to notice. So Quick first sends this initial packet. This is a larger packet length. So that's different than TCP, right? Because in the TCP handshake, those are really small packets. You only see 72 bytes, 74 bytes for the SYN, SYN, ACK, ACK, depending on the options. But here Quick comes right out of the gate with a large packet. In fact, if we take a look at that first initial, if we come down here, we can see, so we got UDP, then right on top of that, so UDP port 443, and we're dissecting that as quick. If we come down here, we can see we have quick IETF. Right now we're running draft 29. So at the time of this recording, draft 29 is what a lot of servers were out there using. It was a somewhat stable version of the protocol before it became version one standard. So as we go forward though, we should start to see this roll to version one and beyond of quick. So in that initial packet, we can see that we have the TLS 1.3 handshake protocol. So just like TLS 1.3 over TCP, it's exactly the same. So we're sending this over to that server, and here's our client hello. Now there are a few differences in here I'd like to highlight. So uh, a couple of the similarities is we still have that SNI. We have our server name indication. So here we're going to YouTube. Uh, down here, application layer protocol negotiation. This should be H3. So if we look at the ALPN, sure enough, H329. That means HTTP3 over draft 29 quick. And if I come down to the bottom here, this is where thing gets interesting. So the quick transport parameters. Now this is new. We're not going to see this over uh, TLS 1.3 over TCP. We're just going to see this over quick. So if I expand this out, Really, this acts a little bit like TCP options do. This is where the two endpoints can communicate to each other some of the parameters. So for example, max data, uh, max stream data, bidirectional. Uh, this shows us initial source connection ID. All right, so we're advertising that to the other side. Max UDP payload size, so 1472. That's the max that we can put inside uh, a UDP payload. So there's several parameters that are communicated to the other side. And in a way, we could, again, think of those almost like TCP options. So it's just showing how many streams, uh, what's the limit per stream that can be sent, and then the limit for the overall data that's coming in. Now, something else that we're going to notice down here in the bottom, padding. So again, the first initial packet for quick is usually very large. In fact, it's usually very close to the maximum frame size. And the padding is what makes that happen. So it's common to see that initial packet also with a padding packet. So there's no real data in there, but technically it's a, it's a quick pad that goes into that quick packet. All right, so one more thing before we leave this packet that we'd like to take a look at is also the quick connection information. Now, down here we see the destination connection ID and the source connection ID. Now, these connection IDs are really important. Each endpoint selects the connection ID for the opposite side. So you can see this is a long, scary looking number. But what this does is it uniquely identifies this quick connection. Now, that connection can live on even if the underlying protocols change in some way. So let's just say a UDP port changes or if there's a change in the IP addressing. If anything changes in those four tuples, so the two IP addresses and the two UDP ports, the quick connection can still live on. 
This means that you can start this YouTube video and you can do it over your home Wi-Fi and you can have a quick connection providing the video. And as soon as you walk out to your car, you flip over to an LTE network. Well, the underlying network changes. Your IP addresses change, uh, the port numbers could change, but the quick connection could stay the same. And so it just migrates into that new conversation. It can take a new network path. So that's one of the advantages to quick is it seamlessly can migrate even if the underlying protocols change. And that's all due to this connection identifier. This identifies this connection on those two endpoints. So here we can see we're using a pretty large number for the other side. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the initial packet coming back from the server. Let's see what it's saying. All right, so now it uses that source connection ID. All right. And the destination connection ID, interesting. And we can see there that it's zero. So for starters, so the, the source one or the one on the client side is zero. And then there's this long, scary looking number here on the server side. This is where we indicate length. And if we come down here to acknowledgement, check that out. So uh, this is where we ACK the packet that came before. This is how the server is acknowledging the packet that the client sent. Now, if we look at the client packet, we're going to see that that packet has an identification number or a packet number of one. The server is now saying, I got your one. I got your packet. You don't have to retransmit it. This is why Quick is reliable because it acknowledges, in the same way like TCP used to acknowledge sequence numbers, now we acknowledge whole packets. So I went ahead and I got that one. You don't have to resend it. Let's go ahead and continue with the server side initial packet. If we come down here, so we went and act the one from the client. If you come down here to the server, hello. So now the server is responding and it's saying, great, let's use this Cypher suite. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some supported versions. So after this point, if we didn't have the TLS decryption keys or the session keys for decrypting this, this is about all we would get from the server side. This is all we would know. But if we take a look at the next one down from this direction, now this is basically an empty ACK, a packet three. This is just the client saying, great, I got your initial part of your server. Hello, Mr. Server. Now the server is going to continue. The server says, wait, wait, I wasn't done here. Uh, I still got more to say, mister. So it's got uh, transport parameters in here. Here it's ALPN is H329. Uh, here it's saying, all right, let's go ahead and talk about this. Our UDP payload size, the max data that can be sent, um, the max that can be sent within a stream. So again, Quick uses streams when it's transmitting and receiving data. Data can be either sent bidirectionally within those streams or unidirectionally. All right, so either one way or both ways within a single stream. It can also support several different streams over a single connection. All right, so it's not just one connection, one stream, but lots of different streams can be in play. And then down here, we see our certificate. So this is where the server is sending the certificate over to the client. And this is where we can also see this happening over the next couple of packets. So by the time we get down to packet number six, this is where we see the first shred of HTTP3. So this is where the dissector is able to start actually seeing some application stuff on the move. And if we come down into the details, this is where, okay, if I wrap up quick IETF, this is where I can see within this quick conversation, I do have a stream. It's a control stream. This looks like the server is starting to set it up. Uh, just 29 bytes of data is coming over from the server. Probably just see it things up and running uh, from the server side. So really, I'm only into this conversation 40 milliseconds. And as I can see, 32 of those milliseconds was just my initial network round trip time. And I'm already beginning to see application data come back from the server. So in this video, you can see how a connection begins, how TLS 1.3 is embedded in those initial packets, and how we can quickly begin to move application data not long after those initial packets. Also, we learned how important decryption is. If we don't decrypt quick, then we can't get this level of troubleshooting and detail into those headers. All of that is encrypted if we don't have those session keys. So if you want some more information about Quick and more hands-on, some more labs, be sure to check out my Pluralsight course on Deep Dive with Quick, and there you can get some more information about this protocol. Thanks for stopping by the channel, and I'll see you on another video.